So do you have a fourth book in mind? Already in the works a little bit. Yes, a little bit. I'm about a fourth of the way through the fourth one, and I'm still kind of piecing together that story. Um, It's kind of a continual thing for me where I'll get ideas throughout, you know, the summer I had a few ideas and I just start putting them down on paper and Mm -hmm. piecing stuff together. Um, so it's just something I try to do as much as I can, but of course with working full time and going to school full time, it's, right. I'm not able to crank them out, you know, as much as I'd like to, but for sure it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, how often does it happen when you're, you're in like what you're doing right now, you're in the middle of this. Do you ever get like a good week or two of content and then just go, nope, yes. and yes. like literally erase the last yeah. two weeks that Absolutely. you've done? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just all part of the process. And do you find that frustrating or you're no. like, okay, I'm back to this. Let's go. It's, it's part of the creative thinking process. So it helps me to narrow down topics and figure out what I'm really wanting from a story. So I'll, I like to try different things and then I might go back and hate it and I'll erase it. But then it helps me to know, okay, why didn't I like it? And what direction do I really want to go to? Um, so it's all just part of it. Even when I'll get the full manuscript done, I will go back again, reread it, and I'll be taking out stuff even when it's done and rewriting. So it's a kind of an ongoing thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what usually comes first, the story or the title? Well, it's been different for each book. The worst thing I can do was the title came first um, or pretty much near first. Glimmers of Hope, um, my husband helped me come up with that title long after the story was written. Um, So that, uh, Drops of Sunlight, the title came first as well. So it's been a mixed bag. Nice. Yeah. And do you have the title of this fourth one? I don't You don't have to share it. I don't yet. I have have like three floating ideas right now. Um, And I haven't figured out which one I'm going to go with yet. And it's still early enough to where I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to change it or not. Mm-hmm. So yeah. H- have you thought about one of those stories actually going viral and maybe becoming a movie or something like that? Have you oh, ever thought yeah, about I that? Mean, in my wildest dreams, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, th- I mean, I this dream one big. Would be what a, can I yeah. say? <laughs> I've only read this one, but that would be a good movie. Oh, I could yeah. totally see that. Being yeah. A movie. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, because I, I would think when you're writing, you might be thinking about this, Thanks. the scene Ooh. happening, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Meaning that it would be audio visual and not yes. only people reading. So yes. that's why I'm asking that. Yeah, it's a, it's exactly right. Because I mm-hmm. when I'm writing, same as when I'm reading, I have it playing in my head mm-hmm. like a movie. So yes. to me, it's always kind of like a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you get that opportunity, can you part of the, your deal be that <laughs> Lauren gets to be one of the inmates? I want to. Oh, I want to okay. play the role of one of the inmates. I don't know if you're tough enough for one I, of those inmates. Oh Lauren. my! I, I can know. act tough. No, I don't know. I don't know. You'll see. No, I do have a, an infatuation with prisons. Really, yeah. I've always watched a lot of prison shows. Yeah. Uh, I took a class at Parkland College. It was Sociology 101, mm-hmm. and we spent an entire summer going in and out of many different correctional centers. Yeah. And it was. I open interesting yeah. yeah to say the least I've done the same when I was getting my bachelor's degree in psychology I took some criminology courses and we went into prisons as well and I I for a while considered being a forensic um, psychiatrist or a forensic researcher so Maddie is living my my alternate life where she's got the job that I I thought about yeah. having so mm-hmm. you wanted to fall in love with an inmate I did yes you got <laughs> <Deep> it <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, that that is one thing though that helped me. Like I had told you this before mm-hmm. when I before I even read it, I mm-hmm. literally hadn't really touched a book in about fifteen or twenty That's years. That's right. You told me that. And um, having like a relationship, like knowing you guys, I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm gonna just try to check yeah. this out. Yeah. And then with it having some prison involvement, knowing yeah. who wrote it, mm-hmm. like it really, mm-hmm. like it pushed me through to finish yeah. it. You know, yeah. and it was a great book. I Thank absolutely you. enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I've talked to a few people actually lately who who have told me that they don't read. They're not readers. You know, they haven't read in a long time. My husband isn't a reader. Like he's like you, Lauren. There's just not really something that interests him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't. I can't really say I relate to that very much because it's. Well, I read every day, um, but I can say that if you push through and you keep looking for a story that interests you, you'll find that reading can be the most relaxing and enjoyable. And thing. this is the thing. I think there is like a trend that people are starting to consume book books, mm-hmm. but, uh, listening 
uh, yes, audiobooks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have those in audio audiobooks? I do not. No? I do not have those in audiobooks, but that I think would be a really cool yeah. idea because a lot of people love to do yeah, that. Yeah, I don't like yeah. to read, yes. but I'll tell you that I read at least five books per month yeah. listening. Yeah, I can't re read a whole book in one day, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I and I speed up the the speed of the the audio mm -hmm. uh, yeah. when I when I listen. So yeah. yeah, I can read a book very fast, and I I find that the best way for me to consume the content. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I I write notes. So oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, a lot of people. I I, I know tons of people who are doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I would never spend you know three months reading one book. <laughs> that I would not. <laughs> but so I would what, listen to to those books, for example. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've been doing, and maybe not three months, but a month month and a half okay. to get through a book yeah. um i really enjoy well, i've been reading a lot of the self-betterment mm -hmm. type books mm -hmm. so to me you know i i like that like 15 i think i mentioned this last week on an episode but like 15 to 20 minutes tops yeah and then get to just like digest and chew mm -hmm. on some of that stuff in a story mm -hmm. environment like this i probably could could get through yeah. it much quicker yeah it's a different type of read this is more fiction <clears throat> is more escapism you know, and you use it to escape. And so you don't have to, you don't have to do like what you're saying where, where you have to really sit and absorb and the content yeah. as much. It's more of a release than it is um, taking on new information. Yeah. Yeah. What, what would you say, Christy, to someone who very much like yourself before you got anywhere close to this and mm -hmm. they're, they may be watching this and go, man, I, I've been chewing on this idea or yeah. thinking about it. Um, and no pun intended, but how do they start getting pen to paper? I literally, the best thing I can say is to sit down and I, I would definitely say type. If you're doing pen to paper, it's too much when you're writing this much content, mm -hmm. put, get in front of your computer, open a word document. And even if it's nonsensical, just start putting stuff on the piece of paper. Don't worry about formatting to start off. Don't even worry about punctuation to start off. Just put your ideas down. And, and then keep building on that. And then you'll, as you do that, you'll take ideas off, you'll add new ones, and then a concept will start to form. But mm -hmm. you have to get past that barrier of it living in your head. Right. And you have to put it on <clears throat> something, otherwise it will never come to fruition to anything. Do, do you have the scripts, like the bullet points of the story, or you mm -hmm. just keep writing, mm -hmm. <laughs> not knowing what's gonna be yeah. after the... <laughs> some people, um, I, I have a lot of writer friends and they do different things. So some, yeah. some writers will do just that. They'll have bullet points of like ideas or concepts or um, story plot points, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't do that. I literally just, it's like word vomit, you know, it's just, blah, 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 there it is. And then I start going from there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so really it's just about, you know, trying to put what's up here and really start to funnel it out into something tangible. If you want to actually get to a point where it's something tangible, right? Mm -hmm. So but, I found, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I just found that interesting. You, uh, you talk about just start putting it like mm -hmm. pen to paper or typing mm -hmm. it out, getting it out of your head. Mm -hmm. That so much applies to anything in, a, in life, yeah. really, right? Yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about our goals, if someone uh, wants to start doing things differently tomorrow, yes, you have to start writing it and yeah. getting it down so you visualize, see it in front of you and Absolutely. start to make those changes. Absolutely. It's kind of that concept where, and I'm a big believer in this, I don't really see the point of having dreams or goals unless you're going to act on them. Mm -hmm. Well, because, oh, there's a word I'm thinking of. Because the other than that is just an idea. Exactly. It's nothing. Yeah. It right. just lives in your head as nothing. Right. You know? <laughs> we all have a friend, and I think I've been pretty, I all have been that at one point, mm -hmm. but where you're just full of ideas. Yeah. Oh, you're always throwing out these ideas, but yeah. I'm sorry, you don't execute or do yeah. anything. No worth anything. Then it's a, it doesn't mean anything, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And it's the same thing where, you know, you'll have... I've known people who say things like, well, I have good, in I had good intentions. I was going to do this and I had good intentions. That means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. Either you do it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So. Yeah. Movers or shakers, yeah. man. Yeah. Or what are you going to be? Yeah. Movers or shakers. Yeah, that's another <laughs> one. <laughs> No, I'm just messing you around. You've got to keep but throwing yeah, these at them. I, yeah, <laughs> I like to. I want to learn. Yeah. Um, but no, you're either going to do it yeah. or you're going to you know, just sit there and, yeah. and not make a lot of noise. Yeah, and right? the noise is it's just that. It's just noise. It and means at, nothing. And at some point, too, though, it gets draining, you know, mm -hmm. to hear like someone, you know, if, if every day you're telling me you're going to quit smoking. Right. And I see exactly. you three weeks in and you're like, you're still burning them, yeah. you know, are you, 
eventually I'm going to be like, will you please just yeah. quit telling me yeah, don't that tell you're going to quit? Yeah. Right. So um, I would encourage anyone out there, though, if you have your own goals or something that you're wanting to accomplish or even change within yourself, it, you, it literally is what we're talking about. You have mm-hmm. to start and, and keep it to yourself. You, if you need to tell someone, sometimes it does help to like tell someone yeah, about tell it. Tell someone that you trust. Some accountability. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Tell that person, um, and, you know, don't, you don't have to get on Facebook and tell everyone. You don't right. have to go out and like tell no. every exactly. single. And if you do do that, make sure you do it, mm-hmm. you know, because then, then you just lose accountability to everybody. Mm-hmm. Hold yourself accountable. For sure. You know, it's, it's, If you're, I just get so tired of people saying, I mean to do this, or I intend to do this, or this is what I want to do, and then never doing anything. I just, it's hard to respect the person. It's hard to even care that much about what they're telling me. It's until I see action, it's just, why are you even saying anything? You Mm -hmm. know, it's lazy is what it is. Right. I mean, and people can get their feelings like, you know, even like you said earlier, it's if your book idea getting turned down, yeah, yeah, it can hurt you. Yeah, it can. But Mm -hmm. it can also push you to go um, and and be bigger, better. Yes. Yes. Um, I think in our world, it's slowly becoming so soft where we we feel we have to talk to everyone the Mm -hmm. same, right? Mm -hmm. And I can promise you, if you talk to me, I am going to respond better to that, like almost like that aggressive coach who is in your fate, you know, that, that works really well for me. Mm-hmm. That's how my father was, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> but like it, it, the, not that I wouldn't respond to some of the softer, like it, mm-hmm. sure. But I know for me, it's going to really hit home if you give me a good chewing, Yeah, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Some people, I think that's part of, and I think Lauren, you're good at this just from knowing you, but it's part of that emotional intelligence and knowing how you can speak to one person versus another Mm -hmm. and that will be motivating to them some people if you're aggressive when you talk to them will shut down and they'll respond the opposite and it's about knowing those differences but it's more important to know how yourself how do i respond to things you Mm -hmm. know if if, am i going to get upset or offended or if somebody says something to me i don't like or am i going to take it in stride and say well that's okay you Mm -hmm. know and and become maybe more focused on what I think is important. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. it's just about knowing yourself so you can know others. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and being open and understanding that everyone is different. Yeah. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Christy, you said you're doing your doctor's degree, right? Yeah. Um, what's, uh, what, what is your degree? Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. what's the goal after that? What do you want to get? Yeah. So, <laughs> my um, career has mostly been in human resources. And right okay. now, I work in career development at Monmouth College, which is really fun and great. My doctorate is an education in human resource development. So I think my dissertation is going to be focused on experiential learning, like internships and things like that for, for college students. Um, I think after I get my degree, I'd like to teach in the evenings, maybe adjunct, pick up a class here or there and teach some courses on human okay. resources or organizational development or those types of things. Do you plan on writing a book about you as well, about your life? No. No? I, Why? You know, I, to be honest, the reason is because I personally, I like to write what I like to read and I don't like autobiographies. I don't like real stories i like escapism i like fiction yeah. that's why i read them for okay. me it's for fun so i don't want to write about myself because frankly i don't think my story is that interesting anyway but also because i wouldn't i, I don't care about that kind of stuff yeah okay. yeah Does that make sense? maybe you would be surprised with the amount of people that would want to know yeah maybe but it's really there's not much to tell. <laughs> yeah. well maybe not now i mean yeah. obviously there hopefully it's a whole lot more left yeah. to your maybe story when I'm 80 and i have you know. had some really interesting things go on right right at that point you will have an amazing story i'm sure of it by then i still won't write it down though yeah <laughs> you should though. what about you do you think you could ever write a book like do you yeah that's one day yeah yeah i'm sure i will you will? That yeah. is a goal? Oh, yeah. Definitely. You it's heard right. it first right here. It's yeah, right. you guys learned. You, you guys heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would yeah. definitely do it. Do you, One day, is, not now. Uh, I'm not at that point yet. What do you think your yours would be about? <laughs> about my life. It would? So you would, yeah. you would go that avenue? Yeah, yeah, I would basically talk about the the everything since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. When you're abandoned at a train station? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're tuned in to the Talk About It podcast. I'm Lauren Fulmer. I'm Victor Dentis. And we're here to talk about it. Each week, we're going to have a guest come in, talk about it, tell their story, 
and really just hope to have some fun and bring some positive energy your way guys make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you know when's the next episode and i see you guys in the next episode talk about a podcast <laughs>